Fire, where I'm here with my little field mate. We're at a right lateral proto right L shear zone, and I have some great illustrations to kind of show the evolution of how these forms. You can see that this one is right lateral and it's left stepping, which creates these little compressional quadrants that become highly fractured in here. Wow. So I'm going to make some videos as well as some figures to put together to show you how these things evolve. And these typically form at the tail end of fault. It gets really narrow down there. And as we move back this way, it starts to get larger. And these can occur at all scales from what you're looking at here into big regionals, regional fault systems. So let's take a deeper dive into our right lateral proto shear zone. So as this little shear zone propagates, it's right lateral, and along here you also see a lot of left stepping fractures. And where you have those little left steps, that creates a little contractional quadrant along that right lateral fault, allowing additional fractures to appear. So let's take a deeper look into this little shear zone. So the diagram in the top left, that's kind of illustrating the evolution of these shear zones. So initially, as these begin to form, you see these little blue shears here. These actually have an antithetic sense of slip. So in that case, they're, they're left lateral along this right lateral shear, shear zone. It's actually a little bit opposite of what you traditionally see in the literature. In the literature, it's pretty common to see these red shears developing first. Those are your right L shears. But in this case, we are looking at more of a antithetic system here. So you get these blue little anti rydell shears developing here. As you get increasing displacement, you get your more traditional rydell shears, rydell shears breaking through right here. That creates these little contractional quadrants allowing for additional anti rydell shears to develop. And with continued displacement, you eventually get this pink shear shown here breaking through. And eventually that will become your more through going fault zone. So just another look at that with some annotations drawn on here. Once again, you can see these little contractional quadrants where you get additional anti rydell shears, shears developing. Those are shown here in green. And then I'll kind of show that without the annotation. Here's a nice example of a different shear zone where you have increasing displacement as you move to the right. So if I edit this image a bit, I can kind of pull out those deformation bands. What you'll see over here on the left is you primarily have just those initial blue bands that are shown here in this diagram. Those would evolve into left lateral strike slip, creating the shear band right here. As you move towards the right, you can see those right L shears developing. Those would represent the red in this diagram. You're also seeing additional anti right L shears developing. Those would represent some of these green, these green lines in this diagram. So the green and the blue both have left lateral. The right Ls would have right lateral. That's because the overall system is right lateral. And then if you squint, as you move all the way to the right, you can maybe start to see some of these pink shears breaking through as you get that increase in displacement as you move towards the right. And if offset were to continue to increase, you would eventually get some pretty complex looking fracture patterns. You can see there's a lot of sand surrounding this. So as that fault zone becomes weathered, it can break down into sand, it can be make it a, a bit of a challenge to walk through if you don't like sand in your boots. And then here's just another example of an outcrop photo where you have the more through going fault zone shown here. You can see that area in white. That's your fault gouge where the grains have been intensely crushed. And if we zoom into here, you can actually start to see some of those fracture patterns surrounding that fault zone. And then once again, pretty much completely pulverized within that zone itself. So great, great place to study deformation bands and these little right L shear zones and strike slip faults, all kinds of great structures at the Valley of Fire.